Hey everyone and welcome to another one of our videos. Today I'm going to be doing the spark plug change, spark plug service, on my 2015 Volkswagen Passat. So here in front of us we have a set of four brand new NGK Laser Platinum premium spark plugs. These are part number PLFER7A8EG and these are in theory the factory OE uh, Volkswagen plugs. Um, per NGK this is the OE part number for them and they are the OE supplier for Volkswagen so I believe these are the original original plugs that came in the car. Um, this is a service that you should be doing at 60,000 miles per my owner's manual. I've heard online uh, anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles for these particular plugs on these particular uh, TSI engines. This is the 1.8 TSI uh, Gen 3 engine, so um, take that for what it's worth. Uh, a lot of the Volkswagens of this era have the very same engine or a very similar related one than the 2 liter uh, turbo engine. Um, but we're going to be going ahead and showing you how to do this service on this particular car. So plugs are here. All you should need on top of that is a 5 8 inch spark plug socket, a torque wrench, and a ratchet. Um, I think there might be some torque spits and things involved. We'll get to that as we get to that. But you're only going to need some very basic tools and from what I've seen it's a very very simple job to do. So we're going to go ahead and spin over to the car and see what's going on over there and we'll go from there. Alright so first step in changing the spark plugs out is obviously getting access to them. And to do that we need to remove the main engine cover here. That just pulls up and out of place. We have a secondary engine cover right here, but we shouldn't need to remove that at all for any reason for this job. Now, once this is out of place, you can see the four coil packs here, and the spark plugs are going to be underneath those. Now, from what I've read online, um, I believe all we will need to do is kind of uh, release the connectors here for the coil packs, take some nuts off, and then possibly release this wiring harness to allow things to pivot out of the way. But basically we just need to disconnect a few things and then move the coil packs out. So I'm going to go ahead and start loosening some things and kind of figure out how we need to proceed. And I'll let you know how we need to proceed and show you uh, uh, via demonstration what we're doing. All right, so I have all of the connectors loosened up. You can see this one had a little bit of a casualty. I'm hoping that doesn't impact uh, longevity, performance, anything like that a whole lot. Um, these things got really brittle over 60,000 miles, surprisingly so. Maybe because the engine operating temperatures are a little higher here in Arizona, I don't know. But that one, uh, the connector snapped off. And in order to replace that, you'd have to repin out a whole new connector, replace the wiring harness. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go about that, but um, none of those are things that I can do right this minute. So I'm not going to do any of that right now. Um, basically, my plan of attack uh, to loosen these guys up once that guy snapped and to get the other ones loosened Let's take a pick, stick it up in here and kind of loosen the clip that way. You can either pop it backwards or stick it in here and, and loosen, loosen it up through that, uh, through the front side. Um, I've seen both methods done online. The pick worked a little bit better for me. Uh, one of the little tabs that's actually on the coil pack, I believe, crumbled whenever I did the pick method as well. So I've got two compromised connectors at the very least. I'll have to see once I get everything apart if there's any more. Um, the plastic starts breaking down. It definitely does. So... Be cognizant of that and, and plan for that and be careful because of that. Um, at this point, I have the whole harness kind of loose. So if I push the intake tube back, I can move that. And I think the way I'm going to be able to get this out is by pushing the intake tube back by hand and sliding all four connectors off and kind of moving the wiring harness down and underneath the coil packs. I don't think I'm going to need to take anything else apart, remove any wiring harness clips, anything like that. But I do need to remove the uh, little ground wires here. In order to do that, I have a 10 millimeter socket on a ratchet. And all we have to do is crack them loose and then take the little nut off the top of this stud. It looks like there's a double nut, but there's one nut on a stud. You remove the little ring terminal there. And then this stud right here, this nut on this stud, is all built into that stud. So all you need to do to remove the coil pack once you've got that out is crack that loose and if we're patient for just a second we have the whole stud come out so you can see that's a, a stud with a nut kind of integrated into it so that's the method of removal that i'm going to try to go with we'll see how that works out
All right, so my previous description of tucking this up underneath the coil packs didn't exactly work out because we've got so many wires tied back here in the engine, just like a lot of the other TSI engines have. Um, but I was able to get it knocked out of the way a little bit. There's a little clamp that attaches the wiring harness to a, a PCV hose down here. Um, went ahead and took the little clamp, just slipped it off of the hose. We'll put that back whenever we're done. But I think I have enough room to wiggle all of the coil packs out while I'm manipulating the harness out of the way as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go for that and see how that works out. And if we need to move more things around or whatever, we'll get to that when we get to it. Coil pack number one is out. That just pulled out really easily. Um, you need to use a little bit of force to get the rubber to unseat from the uh, plug itself, but no problem there. So I have a 5 8 inch socket, spark plug socket, so it has the rubber inside to hold the plug on an extension on a ratchet. And we're going to go ahead and try to get plug number one out. So we are down there on the plug now. Now in theory these are torqued to 30 newton meters and that was pretty easy to break loose. And like most spark plugs didn't want to loosen right up initially but it's loosened up pretty easily now and I should be able to hand turn it out the rest of the way. As usual, there's the sticky points in the threads, but that's totally normal for a, a plug, and especially one in an aluminum head like this. And we're almost there. There we go. Plug's out. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the bench, show you what it looks like compared to a new plug, and then we're going to move on to uh, swapping the other ones. It's really as simple as that, um, but we'll go ahead and, and do the comparison and show you how to install the, the new plugs. All right, so we have the old plug right here, new plug right here, and I wanted to get you a close-up macro shot to show as best as possible uh, the, the condition of the tips. So the old plugs don't look bad in terms of uh, wear. Um, by the color, the, the kind of tannish color, um, everything appears to be running well in the engine. You're not running rich, not running lean. It looks like everything is pretty decent there, at least in that cylinder. So the biggest thing that I notice on these, and it's going to be really hard to see on camera, um, because it is such a fine detail. The old plugs, the tip is definitely worn out and the gap has increased pretty significantly. So uh, that's certainly the reason why you wanna replace these at least every 60,000 miles. Honestly, these are a little bit further gone than I would like. And um, the recommendation that I might take is to do it every 40,000, like some of the people online say, and, and I think maybe even Volkswagen has switched to. Um, again, my owner's manual says 60,000. That's what I'm going by, but I'm probably gonna step that up to 40. So. That's new plug versus old plug. If I slide them down just a little bit, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see everything is identical between the two, other than the original one being marked Volkswagen AG. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw the new plug in um, and keep on repeating the process for every other cylinder. So I'm gonna take you back to the car, show you how to put the new plug in, torque it to spec, and we'll move on and do the rest of them. All right, so we're back and we're ready to insert the new plugs. I have my spark plug in my socket, I inserted it into the rubber part of the socket to start with. This will make life easier. Putting it down in the cylinder, you don't have to just drop it down the tube and hope for the best. That's not always a, a good idea. You're gonna change the gap of your spark plug if you do that. But getting it down in there, and we're gonna hand thread this until we can't head, hand thread it anymore. Reason being, we don't wanna cross thread anything in the head, strip anything out. It is going in, I just pulled up on the extension to confirm that. So we are threading in, the threads are quite long on these spark plugs, so we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But we are there now, and now we're ready to torque it to spec. So that's where German cars in general, and this one is no exception, get interesting. Um, there's conflicting torque specs for this particular vehicle and engine. 25 newton meters and 30 newton meters are the two specs, and it seems like Volkswagen kind of use that interchangeably. I'm gonna go with 27 and a half, it's right there in between. That's plenty tight for a spark plug. So, it's gonna bottom out here in just a second. And I'll crank it again, double check torque, and there we go. That's all there is to it. So, that spark plug is torqued to spec and replaced. The last part of that cylinder is gonna be putting back the coil pack which is relatively easy. Just gonna have to set it down into place. 
There's plenty of grease on the inside of these, so I didn't put any more dielectric grease in. And now that's set down into place. So I'm not gonna actually put any of the screws in for the coil packs, or should I say the studs? I'm not gonna put any of those in until I'm done with all four of these. Um, but basically I'm gonna repeat this process on the rest of the cylinders here, and we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just time lapse that. If there's anything that requires specific instruction outside of you watching that, I will be sure to pause that and let you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the plugs. All right, so I got all of the plugs replaced, all the coil packs back on. If you saw at the end, I had a little bit of a struggle getting my spark plug socket out. That's always something to be cognizant of. The rubber uh, sometimes will overpower the amount of friction fit your socket extension has with the socket. So I had to grab another extension that had a little bit better fit. If you get one stuck, don't panic. You can always take the plug out and, and put it in with a different socket or something like that. It's not a huge deal either way. Um, but just something to be cognizant of if you if you have that happen to you, don't panic. Um, at this point, I'm basically ready to plug everything back in, put everything back together. Uh, all of the tabs that, that I had mentioned that had broken off on the coil packs, they basically all uh, sheared off or are half sheared off. In fact, this one's the only one that's really even present anymore on that coil pack. Um, all of the tabs on the connectors are intact except for this one. That one just exploded whenever we released this, so it is what it is. That's, uh, I'm guessing, just how these Volkswagen connectors roll. I haven't seen that happen in any other online videos, but I am somebody who's very, very careful about connectors and things like that and managed to break the third one in or second one in. Um, so it is what it is. Uh, I don't think it will affect performance too badly. At least I hope not. We'll see whenever I start the vehicle up. But I'm going to go ahead and plug all these back in, put the studs back in, put the ring terminals back on, and then put the nuts back on on top of those. And at that point, oh, can't forget that. Put the wiring harness clamp back onto the PCV line here. At that point, we'll be done with the installation other than putting on the engine cover. So I'll do all that, start up the car, see how it works, make sure everything's all good, and we should be done. So we'll visit back whenever we're at that point. I don't have the engine cover back on, but everything else is put back together. We're ready to start it up. So we can go ahead and do that, and we'll see how it runs. All right, so everything sounds like it's running smoothly. That's good. We shouldn't have any issues, I don't think. Um, like I mentioned, all of the coil packs, the little tabs broke off, so I'll monitor those connectors, make sure that they don't start spreading apart and starting misfires or anything like that, but I think we're gonna be good to go. So, spark plug change, really easy, took me about 45 minutes or an hour, and that's including filming and all of that, so a little bit less time for you, more than likely, um, if you're mechanically inclined and all, but easy job. Definitely uh, recommend doing it a little bit earlier than 60,000 miles, though. So, with that, I wanna thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.